We're here at the Long Island Railroad train station in Bayside, speaking to a uh, very qualified candidate for a civil judgeship, a countywide judgeship, uh, Jessica Earl Gargan. And uh, I've known the Gargan family for a long time. They go way back. Uh, your presence in Bayside and Queens have been along as well. My whole life. Your whole life. So, so tell us, you're running for to be a judge. Tell us about the, the actual position for a countywide judge, what it means and why you're doing it. Sure, thank you so much. Um, again, I'm Jessica Earl Gargan and I'm running for civil court countywide uh, judicial seat. Um, civil court in Queens County is in Jamaica on Sutphin Boulevard um, and I'm running for one of the judgeships there. There are currently four openings. Um, four candidates were nominated by the Queens County Democratic Party. I am one of them, and I am one of the only of the two candidates facing a primary election on the 23rd. So there is someone running against me for the position that I am seeking. Um, it's a weird time to be doing this, obviously. Um, I did plan on getting out to meet voters so people could get to know me more because the position I'm running for is countywide. So when anyone in Queens County goes to vote on the 23rd, or if they vote, um, if they're voting from home by the the mail-in ballots, which the governor has allowed, my name will be on every ballot that is throughout the county of Queens. Um, so I did intend on getting out and campaigning and meeting people, but circumstances, unfortunately, uh, disallowed that. I was born and raised here. Um, my father was a bartender here for many years. Many of the local establishments, Minstrel Boy, One Station Plaza, when it was the original One Station Plaza, um, I grew up right down the block in the apartment buildings on 211th Street. I um, currently live in a house down on the other side of Bayside on 214th Place, my, uh, where I also grew up. I have my husband, who was a bartender here for years, a 12-year-old daughter. And I've been working in the court system for about 10 years for two judges. I currently work for a Supreme Court judge, Judge William Biscovich, and we do contested matrimonial matters. Before that, I worked for a civil court judge in civil court the court that I'm seeking to be elected to. I worked there for approximately three to four years, so I know how it works. I've been there, I've done the work. Um, just about me, I started my career 20 years ago um, as a prosecutor in Kings County. I prosecuted solely domestic violence crimes. Um, I was given a choice when I started there of where I wanted to be within the, um, within the office, and I felt that domestic violence crimes was the place for me to help abused victims, not just wives, but husbands, partners, children. And I was there doing that for three years. And then I was a trial attorney and I tried cases with throughout Queens, the Bronx, Brooklyn, civil type cases, car accidents, um, contracts, things of that nature, all of the things that would bring somebody to civil court. So I have experience with criminal law. I have experience with civil law on both the attorney trial side and on the judicial side working for two judges. So I, I feel that I am highly qualified for the position. Um, I, well, I'd yeah. have to say if you work with Judge Viskowitz, that is a very prestigious and very respected pedigree. So you've had a lot of experience with some very tough cases. Yes, we have. Um, we've been in the matrimonial part dealing with contested divorces and custody matters. For almost five years now, or just about five years now, we've been together there. And um, some of the things we see are, I mean, when someone's going through a divorce, it's potentially the worst moment in their life, the hardest time of their life, especially when children are involved. And it takes a lot of patience and compassion. Um, you know, you have to apply the laws, but sometimes the laws, for at least for matrimonial, they don't correspond with people's lives. And you have to be able to be a judge, and Judge Viscovich is, and I think I've learned from him, how to take compassion and fairness and integrity and find a way to apply it to the law so that people get an outcome that may not always be what they want, but it's fair and it's just for the situation. And I think that's one of the most important qualities in a judge, and I feel I have that, is the, the compassion, the patience, um, the willingness to listen and to apply the law fairly, no matter who's standing before me, um, wherever you come from, whatever your race may be, your ethnic background, your sexual orientation. Um, when you oh, or your political affiliation. You've worked with guys like Joe Murray. He's a Republican on the other side. 
and you guys get along really well. He speaks very highly of you. Oh, that's very nice. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I've been very lucky. Um, I was endorsed by the Queens County Democratic Organization, and I'm appreciative for that. I, I truly am. And I think some of the people there are wonderful people. My uh, many opponents running against candidates all over the slate who were nominated by the organization are running on a go against the machine platform. And that's fine. Um, I th judicial races are different. Um, judges are supposed to be impartial and fair, and it's not supposed to matter who backed them, who got them nominated. They're not beholden to those people. Um, and a judicial primary is a very new phenomenon, especially in Queens County. For many, many years, people would go in and vote for a judge and not know their name, maybe never even heard of them before, but there were just four Democrats. And if you're a Democrat, you voted for the four Democrats and, and you went about your day. Times are changing. And now I do have an opponent. Last year, there was a primary race as well. And I think it was the first time in many, many years. I don't want to say how many because I don't want to get it wrong, but it was many years. And it's, it's happening again. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with people having a choice. People should have a choice. Um, but I believe that people should not vote for someone because they're nominated by the party organization or because they're independent of the party organization. Judges are supposed to be independent. I have actually, many people have reached out to me throughout this process saying that they've researched and that they're looking into the candidates. And I encourage that. I encourage people to find out who I am. I encourage people to not just say, well, I'm gonna vote for her because the party nominated her, or I'm gonna not vote for her because the party nominated her. Research, do a Google search. It's, it's really simple these days. Um, do a Google search of who's running. You get the ballot, Google the names, find out more. I have a website, go to my website. Go to my Facebook page, ask your friends, ask people. Um, now with the voting at home, it's easier than ever. You get the ballot at home before you fill in the bubbles, you have time to do a quick little search. And I've had people um, send me messages on Facebook saying, I'm filling out my ballot. I have a question. And I'm open to that. I'm open to talking to people. It's very hard because of the circumstances. I can't just get out there. I can't just do a you know, come meet me in Crocheron Park and I'll tell you all about me. Um, so I encourage every voter to research myself, my opponent, and then make a decision based upon the qualifications, the integrity, the experience that they feel qualifies for this position. Being a countywide judge, and especially because of the times that we're in, and the, the demographics and sometimes even the polarization of, of uh, people. The, um, what kind of cases do you think are going to be coming to you now? Um, I think this in civil court, like I, I don't know if I said it earlier, so excuse me if I did. Civil court deals with a myriad of cases if you're suing for damages up to $25,000. It also deals with landlord tenant cases um, and things of that nature. I think we are going to see when we get past this, I guess, or get to the next phase or maybe the phase after that. But at some point, I think we're going to see an influx of cases dealing with landlords and tenants and people owing money, whether it be to credit card companies or any sort of creditor. Um, I think we're going to see an influx of you know, in the in the criminal courts, we may see an influx of, you know, cases arising from all the different things that have been happening. So I think there's definitely going to be an influx of cases. And I think I'm qualified to handle that. You know, I come from this neighborhood. This is a beautiful neighborhood. I, I'm proud to say I'm born and raised and living in Bayside. Um, but I understand what it is to work for a living. And I understand what it is to live paycheck to paycheck. I've been there. I know it. Um, my father was a bartender. My mother was a secretary. We were a working class family. Um, I went to law school at night so that I could help my mother. My father was ill for many years. And I went to law school at night so that I could work full time during the day 
to help pay the bills. Um, so I understand what it is to want or need for something. And when someone comes into a courtroom, I think it's important that they know the judge they're coming before has not made a decision, is not on the landlord side already, or even on the tenant side already. A judge is not supposed to be an advocate. The judge is the umpire of the game. The judge is supposed to make sure that the rules are applied fairly and equally. And there's a, a, a another saying that goes around is that if someone's backed by the party establishment, they're beholden to them. If elected, I am beholden to no one but the citizens that vote for me. And I can promise every citizen of this county that they will walk into a courtroom and if I am sitting on the bench, they are walking in with a clean slate and they have just as much chance as the person on the other side. The facts are the facts. And I plan to apply the law, the applicable law to the situation with fairness and compassion and respect. Every person who walks in a courtroom deserves respect. And I plan to give that to them.